Let me tell you about a really ugly strategy some realtors are using. I'll explain why I'm wearing this cape and then I'll share with you a really interesting fact happening with the Toronto real estate numbers right now. So let me say there's a ton of great agents out there. Those aren't the ones I'm talking about. There's the strategy that the other agents are using. In particular, winning your listing. There's a strategy that many realtors will use to win your listing they have to have the highest listing price. So at the listing appointment, they know you might be interviewing other agents. They know that you have a certain number in your mind as the seller, and it's usually higher than sometimes it needs to be. They will come up with a number sometimes even higher than your number because that will excite you and you're already making plans as to, wow, I can even get more money. Well, just because the agent said that that's the number doesn't make it so. But you as the seller, many times you'll be convinced that that's the right agent. They can get the most for my house because that's what you would like. Well, it doesn't happen. Your home sits there. And the B part to that agent strategy of coming up with the highest price is then talking you down every single day, beating you up for price reductions and they're going to blame it on the market has changed and we're in a downturn and you're going to see all the headlines out there telling you the same thing and you're going to believe it. So you're going to keep reducing price. So that's one strategy, terrible strategy. It hurts you, the seller. In the previous market, we saw a lot of that strategy in winning the listing. But what we're seeing in this market is also the opposite. Realtors coming in at the listing appointment with the lowest price. And if you're not up to really what's happening or you're not, you're not careful as the seller, you're going to go with that because it's equally easy for some of these realtors to convince you based on all the headlines out there that the market is lower than even what you think it is. And they're going to show you all these other properties that are sitting out there not selling. Why would the agent want to come in low? Well, they want the quick sale and they don't want to carry your listing. There's costs involved in carrying the listing. There's the initial photography costs and staging, and then there's ongoing marketing costs and time and effort. They don't want anything to do with that. They want a quick sale. They don't get paid until your listing sells. So, the quicker the better for them. So those agent pricing low, they're okay sacrificing your money so they can get paid quicker. We just recently sold the property and after we sold it, the seller tells us that we were the highest. Now, when we went to the listing appointment, we didn't have a goal of being higher or lower. We analyzed the numbers, analyzed the data, analyze the features of one house compared to the other homes and we come up with a price that makes sense based on the data. Now what the seller does with that information is up to them but we present it in a way where our goal is not to be the highest, not to be the lowest. The goal is just to be right because if we get that listing we need to stand behind the number we came up with. Well. In that situation, a seller told us we were 50 to 75,000 75, higher than everybody else. And we sold it in one week at the price we said we were going to sell it. Those are the people you want to work with that can back it up with data. Regardless of what you want, regardless of what we want, I mean, my goal is always to get you as much as possible. But the numbers are the numbers and next week the numbers could be something different but that'll be a different listing appointment based on the new numbers for that house in that neighborhood. Who you hire matters. If you like this video, pass it along. Now let's get into why I'm wearing this cape. This is why we're wearing capes. The fine folks at the Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital have found the absolute coolest way to raise funds in support of kids and youth with disabilities. They're gonna be hosting an event called Capes for Kids. It's at the Raptors 905 game this Monday, 
February 6th at 7 p.m. at the Paramount Five Food Center, and the goal is to make it into the Guinness Book of World Records for most amount of people wearing capes in one building. I think the record stands at about 2,266. I'm sure we're gonna beat that. We can beat that. It's hosted by Pascal Siakam. There's gonna be other faces that you guys know. So if you're free, again, Monday night, February 6th, join us. We're gonna be there. It's in support of a great cause. We hope to see you guys there. If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. And if you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Below this video, in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you. This way, I'll know ahead of time and I'll make sure my schedule's organized so we can talk about whatever's on your mind. Let's get into the numbers. I have here, City of Toronto, broken down by week for a whole year. This is for detached properties only, this chart. Week ending January 25th, 96 sales, 96 detached properties were sold. And if you could see, you know, from the, the beginning of the year, each week, sales are up, sales are up each single week. It's what we expect. So 96 were sold, 15 of those were at $2 million or more. 22 of those 96 sold for under a million dollars. So you've got the luxury and you've got the, the entry level. Compared to a year ago, huge difference. When we look at price compared to a year ago, we are average sold price 20% lower than last year's average sold price. This year we sold 15 at $2 million or more. Same time last year, 45. It's hard to imagine the market a year ago when we're in the market we are right now. It's a huge difference. Average sold price we said is 20% lower than what it was a year ago. The median price of a million three hundred and forty five is 19% lower than where the median price was a year ago. When we look at the dotted line here, the dotted line is a four week moving average. Makes it easier to, to spot trends. Well, we can see that average sold price has been sloping down. It's not down like, like it was early or much earlier, you know, after the peak last year. It's not an aggressive down, but over the span of two and a half, three months, average sold price is sloping down. Median price also sloping down. That's the trend that we're on. Looking at the sales, the orange is this year's sales. The blue is last year's sales. Well, last year, sales were going up. We expect it at this time of the year, as we get through the winter, as we approach spring, we expect more and more sales, we expect more and more listings, we expect activity in general to increase. Well, of the 96 that sold, 39% sold at list price or more. I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the field, more and more activity and more and more competition between buyers. And here we have, and it's been growing, percentages selling at list price or more. Since the year started, it's been growing each week. And now we're at 39% for week ending January 25th, property selling at list price or more. I know maybe it's not what you wanna hear, but that's what's happening in the streets of Toronto. Listings. Listings have been increasing each week. Active listings are sitting at 789 properties available for sale, midnight, January 25th. Months of inventory since the beginning of the year, each week has been dropping. Now, these really high months of inventory here, the five, the 4.8, I mean, that's holiday season, Christmas, New Year's, I, I told you not to take those numbers that serious. And now we're become, coming more in line to where we were before. And we're actually lower than we were before going into the holiday season. We're sitting at 1.9 months of inventory. And as months of inventory come down, prices go up. That's what's happening right now over the previous three to four weeks. 
that was all of Toronto. Here we have central Toronto. The green here is west Toronto and the red is east Toronto. Taking a closer look at that and how different parts of Toronto are behaving. West Toronto, 40 detached properties were sold. Four were at $2 million or more. Average sold price is up, sitting at 1.4. The median price is 1 million, also 1,345, which is the same median price for all of Toronto. Well, average sold price is 12% lower than what it was a year ago. Median price is 11% lower than what it was a year ago. Again, this is for West Toronto. Months of inventory for West Toronto sitting at 1.6. So similar to all of Toronto, as months of inventory come down, prices have been going up. Here's central Toronto, 26 detached properties were sold, nine were at $2 million or more. Average sold price, a little bit over 2 million, 2 million bucks. 2 million and 56 is the average sold price for central Toronto. 2 million and 56 is 21% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. The median price of 1,851 is 23% lower than where the median price was a year ago. Months of inventory for central Toronto is sitting at three. So it's higher than the other parts of Toronto, but still coming down from where it was before. Here's East Toronto. 30 detached properties were sold. Two of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price is 1,213,000, which is 23% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. The median price of 1,169 is 19% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. If we look at the four week moving average for East Toronto, now East Toronto is East York, Beaches, Scarborough, that's all East Toronto. The four week moving average and the four week median moving average kind of looks like prices over the last two and a half months are sloping a bit upwards. I've spent the last few days in the field in East Toronto working with buyers looking for properties and I could tell you activity is really picking up. There seems to be a lot of competition. There's properties that we see that you know a day later they have offers, multiple offers. There's a lot happening in East Toronto real estate wise right now. Months of inventory for East Toronto following the same pattern. Out of the holiday season, it's been coming down week after week, but it's sitting right now at 1.3 months of inventory. That's extremely low. Not 0 0.5 extremely low like we used to have, but in this time right now in this market where we're thinking balanced market, we're not having a balanced market situation in East Toronto. We're sitting at 1.3, very much a seller's market right now. Here's the summary of West Central and East. I've highlighted the, the months of inventory here, 1.63 and 1.3 months of inventory. I've also highlighted the amount of properties selling at list price or more. Central Toronto, it's as high as 46 percent and East Toronto 47 percent of the property so close to half are selling at list price or more. Look is, is this going to be the trend? Is, is this the new market? Again I know that's not what the big headlines are saying but grassroots on the streets this is what's happening right now for the real estate for Toronto detached properties. Quick look at semis. 21 semis were sold Three of those were at $1.5 million or more. The average semi price is only 21, sold for 1,213,000, which is 24% lower than where the semi-detached semi prices were a year ago. The median price of 1.1 million is 23% lower than where the average median price was, not the average, the median price was a year ago. Months of inventory for semis, no surprise following the same pattern as detached coming out of the holiday season it's coming down each week now sitting at 1.8 months of inventory townhouses only 10 freehold townhouses were sold 
One of those was at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price of the 10 freehold townhouses that sold was $1,165,000. $1,165,000. is 20% lower than the average sold price a year ago. And year over year for median price, median price is down 19% for townhouses. Months of inventory sitting at 1.7 months of inventory. Let's take a close look at condos. 142 condo apartments were sold for week ending January 25th. If we look at the sales, holiday time here, each week, sales are up week after week. 142 condos were sold, 16 of those were at $1 million or more. Average sold price one week to the next, it's up. It's now sitting at $736,000 for the average condo apartment sold across the city of Toronto. $736,000 is 5% lower than where the condo prices were a year ago. Just talking about condos, this year we sold 16 at a million dollars or more. Same time last year, the same week, we sold 44 condos at a million dollars or more. Huge difference in price, uh, sorry, in the luxury condo selling. I'm surprised that we're only 5% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. So 736. 5% lower, we said the median price of 628 is 13% lower than where the median price was a year ago. Looking at the four week moving average for average price and for median price, prices are sloping down over the previous two and a half to three weeks. Not aggressively coming down, but they have been sloping down. Sales week Coming out of the holiday, sales have been going up. 142, we said, sold a quarter of those, 25% sold at list price or more. Listings, listings sort of have been going up each week, except for this current week. Listings are a little bit less than what they were the previous week. 446 condos were listed. Active listing is sitting at 2,125 active listings, condos available for sale at midnight, January 25th. 2,125 is 3.3 times more than the amount of active listings we had a year ago at this time for condo apartments. Months of inventory following similar pattern, although the months of inventory are much higher than a detached market, Similar pattern in a sense, week after week, out of the holiday season, months of inventory are coming down. They're now sitting at 3.5 for the condo market. Here's a quick summary. Look, months of inventory are lower probably than anybody expected at this time. Is this the new norm? I, I gotta ask, is this what we're gonna see? Because if this is what we're gonna see, it kind of helps us to understand which way prices are going. I, I can't predict if they're gonna stay months of inventory this slow, but it's not looking like it's gonna be a balanced market. It's definitely not looking like we're in a buyer's market situation. It's still sitting in a seller's market and we're seeing more and more multiple offers on properties happening out there. Have a great day, thanks for watching.